Welcome to the RSP Boiler Room. I'm Matt Waldman with the Rookie Scouting Portfolio. Today's episode features Wendell Smallwood, the West Virginia running back, against Texas from last year. And it's a gap play that we're going to be looking at. I've been talking about gap plays for a couple of weeks now on some of the Boiler Room episodes, often discussing how gap plays often require a very decisive mentality. It's more fill in the blank in contrast to zone blocking schemes, multiple choice. But it doesn't mean that gap plays are for running backs who lack patience. There still has to be some understanding and degree of patience when it comes to approaching the blocks and setting up blocks in a gap scheme. It's just that running backs have really mostly one choice on this type of a play. Um, now that's not always the case, but it's a simplified explanation. This particular play, you're going to be looking at two pulling guards to the right side, and then the offset fullback that I'm circling to the left of the QB is going to work as the lead blocker to the edge. How this play is going to play out, you're going to see this right outside linebacker come around this right tackle, around this fullback, and make the tackle on Wendell Smallwood. Let's watch it a couple of times in full speed. Now let's watch it one more time. There's 33 coming around, making the tackle. So what happens here? What happened here? Watching it one more time, you know, you can certainly say that Number 78 doesn't get a good reach coming off the double team to get this outside linebacker. And that because he doesn't reach the outside linebacker, the outline, outside linebacker has a free opportunity to make this play. That's one truth. That certainly is something that did happen and is partially responsible. This is a team game, though. And with double teams like this, the tackle's not always going to reach the second level player, especially when that second level player is decisive and heads downhill. So there are other factors involved here. The other factor that I would say that's most significant is actually the running back himself. Watch how fast Smallwood approaches the edge. Within the fourth step, he's already reaching his hand out to the defender's back, meaning that he's already close enough to touch his lead blocker. When a running back is this close on a gap play where he has a lead block, he's too close. I know we've seen pictures of O.J. Simpson or Thurman Thomas or a number of great backs following lead blockers and putting their hands on the back of the of the man as if he's guiding that blocker to his opponent. That's not what that's not really what's going on. What's really going on is that the running back didn't conserve the pace and the length of his steps in an appropriate way to set up the block with good timing. He rushed it. That's generally what happens here. It's something a lot of people don't really talk about. But within the four step the arm is out here he should probably be about a yard away. Now, if he's a yard away, that's what we want to start looking at, is what would happen if he's actually further away, as I'm saying he should be? Well, then that's when you start looking at how this play might have unfolded. And we're going to do this in slow motion so you can get a chance to see what I'm talking about. Okay, let's break it down to about a quarter speed. I know it's going to seem a little slow. But as we watch, but you can already see he's moving to about twice the step rate as his lead blocker. And about right here, that four step, the arm comes reaching out. Let's say he's about a step further back. He takes his stride a little bit slower and he's a step further back. At this stage, he's far enough back that a couple of things happen. One is he's going to have more room to spot how these blocks develop off the edge. He's also going to influence this 
backside defender, this outside linebacker oftentimes playing defensive end in 4-3 sets or 4 lineman sets. This guy's playing down the line right now. Now he's angled towards the blocker here, but he's still keeping himself parallel to the line of scrimmage and protecting that gap. If the running back's a little further back, it's probably going to influence this edge man to creep up a little bit more to the line. And this is important because it allows the running back to set up a cutback. But because he's rushing this far, the line, this outside linebacker is still taking the angle of staying downhill because of how fast this back is going. Two more steps and you can see here's that outside linebacker heading straight downhill. He's not angling in at all whereas if the running back was a little further back you'd probably see him angling here. On top of that if the running back's another yard back he's gonna have more room to handle number 33 who's coming around this corner. So the running back being here, where 33 is just going to come right around, running back's going to be at the 48, let's say. That's where it'd be a more appropriate distance. Now, it may not change what his lead blocker did, which was to head downhill, because that's what he saw as his job. It was 78's job to take on the outside linebacker. It would have also given Smallwood, being a yard further back, more room to cut downhill inside his blocker and number 33 wouldn't have mattered at all on this play. Look at it one more time. Imagine him being where my cursor is. See the difference? See where my cursor is and where he might have the chance to cut back? A lot more room to get downhill if you're here rather than where he is right now, which is outside the, the guy's shoulder, the lead back's shoulder and now trying to cut back it. That's a much more difficult cut back than it is to be at the 48. A lot more room to cut back downhill and if you're going a little slower and then accelerating through here that speed timing also throws off number 42's ability to gauge the the tempo of the run as he's trotting downhill. And remember 42 may also be more influenced to head a little closer to the line of scrimmage if Smallwood is here and then that angle is a little bit more in this direction rather than heading straight downhill and if he's heading more towards the backfield and Smallwood cuts inside Smallwood ends up with the with the speed advantage and the angle advantage instead as he tries to make the cutback he's not even a yard away now he's like a half a yard away at best if he's here and cutting downhill, he's going to be able to go straight at top speed or accelerating while this defender is trying to accelerate around the corner. The advantage, once again, is to Smallwood. And if Smallwood gets down that hill, this defender misses. 42 is most likely headed more downhill and already missed and is probably at the same angle as this number 33. And Smallwood is probably where 42 is right now with 42 behind him in that, you know, at that different angle. And Smallwood is cutting through here and maybe even bouncing it outside with this wall of blockers here. And it's a much bigger play. Much more feasible that this is what's going on. This is what could have happened. I mean, slower pace. Here's where the cutback takes place. Now he's he would be able to cut back and probably be even with the lead blocker. This defender is either going to catch him probably about two yards downfield and then he could probably generate a couple more yards with a push and get a four yard gain. That's at worst. Or this defender again it had taken a different angle because of being, the back being further away and taking more of an angle towards the line of scrimmage which would have allowed the back to cut downhill curl around 67, 64, and 65 and be breaking his way into the open field. That's what a more savvy 
gap runner would probably be doing. Frank Gore, from what I hear, is the example for gap running for NFL coaches to recommend backs to watch. And it's that kind of patience that is often required in a gap style play. Let's just watch it one more time, going slowly, and just imagine for yourself if he went a little bit slower how this play could have developed because you can see 42 early on was actually taking more of an angle towards the pocket towards the backfield and then when he sees how fast the runner is starting to go he flattens out that back hung back a little more this could have been a much bigger play Thanks again for watching. I'm Matt Walden with the RSP Boiler Room. You can check out more of my videos at YouTube on the RSP Boiler Room. That's my channel. Or my blog, www.mattwaldmanrsp.com. Thanks a lot.